Hi, I'm Dr. Patrick Drohan. I'll be presenting research by my master's student, Ms. Emily Lesher, uh, who's looking at critical source area index or its P index use in uh, the Richmond Valley province of central Pennsylvania. Uh, the team of us are from around the world, uh, Ireland, Sweden, and the United States. Nutrient management in the Eastern US uh, has been a long-term problem with a large number of our rivers and streams impacted. Uh, the largest sources of the pollutants impacting these rivers and streams come from agricultural pollution, mainly in the forms of large amounts of nitrogen, phosphorus, and sediment. And uh, this water quality degradation will often lead to eutrophication of large water bodies like Chesapeake Bay. Uh, balancing animal needs and the agronomic needs in these fields has become a long-term problem with most recently the US EPA trying to mandate watershed uh, cleanups via the total maximum daily load uh, mandate. Traditionally in Pennsylvania and much of the United States, uh, spreadsheet calculations using the P-index with field walks uh, are the most predominant type of uh, field-based assessment of P-risk. Higher values of a P-index are given to areas with higher risk, and these indicate areas where some type of change in management is needed. P-index calculations are largely driven by source and erosion risk uh, for P-transport. Conversely, in Europe, there's been a large use lately of what's called the CSA index, critical source area index, which uses microtopography to predict where P-transport mobilization potential is greatest, and this is derived from LIDAR analysis and GIS. These subfield scale models produce detailed maps of where areas of highest runoff potential with highest P concentrations uh, exist in the landscape. Our objective with this study was to look at how the critical source area does in comparison to P index for identifying where phosphorus runoff is likely to occur. Uh, specifically, we were curious about how the CSN, CSA index would do in predicting where phosphorus runoff was highest from high phosphorus soils, and if areas identified as a CSA body index were actually um, having higher soil test phosphorus values than areas outside these CSAs. Uh, next, we are curious if the areas identified as the CSA body index coincide with areas that are also identified as high risk by the P index. And last, uh, we were curious how use of either of these might uh, uh, change farming practices uh, and lessen agricultural runoff to contributing water bodies. We are working in uh, central eastern Pennsylvania in the Mahantango Creek watershed, specifically the WE38 subwatershed of the USDA ARS. This is a mixed land use watershed. It's fairly large for Pennsylvania. It's a long term agricultural research watershed. Uh, we used protocols developed by Ian Thomas uh, for his doctorate in England at Bristol University, or uh, in England, uh, with, uh, excuse me, I'm blanking out here, uh, Phil Jordan <laughs> uh, in Northern Ireland, uh, and applied those to WE38. Uh, the methods we used uh, are highlighted in this paper by Ian from 2016. Uh, for our study specifically in Pennsylvania, we identified four case study areas and narrowed these down to specific areas within that had a defined upslope drainage area, contributing area. Uh, and then within these areas, we conducted intense field sampling. The original CSAs were modeled off of data collected from 2011, 2013 at two different depths. So we had essentially two different CSA models developed. Uh, the soils were analyzed via traditional Malik 3 protocols for soil P levels. Um, and the P index scores were derived from the standard spreadsheet model with field walks and detailed management history. Um, management history was collected from the most recent available data, which really uh, included a mix of information from about 2018 to 2021. So to address our first objective here of uh, whether there were differences between the CSA, um, the index values in areas inside and outside the CSA. For the four case study areas you see here, the uh, pinkish color is the uh, uh, defined sub watershed. The green is where the CSA is. 
and the black R uh, sampling points that were conducted uh, to evaluate where differences between the CSA uh, and non-CSA areas were. So these are not the points were, that were used in the original analysis. That, that was a field-based agronomics soil P uh, assessment. These are points that were generated from field data we collected after the initial models were run. And this data is being used to validate the CSA model. Uh, the four subwatersheds have different types of manure history. And uh, subwatersheds two and three had the biggest differences in soil phosphorus levels inside and outside of the CSA, uh, but they did not necessarily marry each other. In case study area two, outside the CSA had the largest p values, whereas in case study area three, uh, the largest p values were found inside the CSA. In case study, area, case study areas one and four, uh, phosphorus values were similar between the two areas. Uh, but in case study area four, you had very, very high values. Uh, and in case study area one, you had much lower values, almost uh, uh, three times less. For objective two, looking at the relationship between the CSA index and the P index, uh, we found um, uh, for case study area one that most of the fields were ranked as a low P index value. In this case, the blue shading that you see here coincides with where the CSA is, and the colors outlined in these individual fields correspond to the p-index value in the fields. In case study area two, fields two and three upslope from the CSA, which is adjacent to the stream in all of these pictures uh, at the very bottom here. Case study area two had the highest uh, p-index scores upslope. Case area three had all low scores for fields. Case study area four had uh, higher values lower um, in the uh, subwatershed. Case study area four had the highest values um, in the area in between the upper field and the lower field. So why the differences? Uh, in these cases, land management plays a significant role, uh, especially in the types of manure being produced uh, and also farmer behavior. Uh, farmer four in case study area four is continuously applying manure regardless of the p-index scores because the hogs on his operation are producing large amounts of manure. In the case area of two and three, we seem to see a situation where there is a long-term phosphorus buildup uh, in case area two that requires some type of management behavior for field application of manure. Um, one of the interesting things that comes from this analysis is, is a discovery that an area having a high soil test phosphorus does not mean that you automatically will have a high CSA, uh, or you are, does not mean you automatic, automatically have a CSA area. So for instance, in case study area four, you have high phosphorus values in this field two area, but a lot of the field does not have a CSA. And uh, last, we could see discrepancies between the field data between when the original data was collected, the original soils data was collected that uh, was used to build the first run of the CSA model. Uh, for our last objective, looking at how use of either of the index scores might change agricultural runoff, uh, one of the conclusions we have come to is that adopting the CSA index as a new decision support tool in Chesapeake Bay could really help meet TMDL goals, especially in identifying very specific areas of the landscape uh, where you want to target management changes. P index, however, should be used as a starting point for identifying areas uh, on the farm that are at risk for broader scale issues. And this is a really good example too of how uh, different types of agricultural practices have really driven differences we see in the P index scores, but how the CSA index can drill into where those issues are occurring on the farm at the field level, subfield level. Um, if when addressing the p-index, your uh, p-source factors still result in a high p-index value, then it's likely that you have some issue going on with mobilization and transport factors that are contributing more to p-runoff, and simple changes to farmer behavior of fields will not solve the problem. In this case, something like a CSA index is really useful because now you can precisely pinpoint where issues are occurring on the farm in terms of tra transport risk and direct delivery to uh, uh, local water bodies. Thank you.